Digital, digital Lions Cup. Um, just a quick reminder that you have 14 minutes with an additional one per speaker. Um, justices can, can take over now. Thank you, Mr. Registrar. Do you want to open court? Samar, that's you. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, we're ready to go. I can start time. Okay, for the appellant, we have Husani Raymond and Elizabeth Tuck. For the respondent, Her Majesty the Queen, we have Alexander Robbins and Daria Rabar. Council, assume that uh, we're familiar with the facts. We've read all your materials and we're familiar with the content in the Supreme Court decision. If you could just uh, get right into your main argument and your salient points that um, is really going to be the basis of this appeal. So, um, Mr. Raymond or Ms. Tuck, who will be speaking first? I will be speaking first. Okay, so Council, whenever you're ready, the Registrar will start time. Thank you. Before I begin, I'd just like to confirm that my camera and audio is sufficient for the justices of the court. Yes, it's fine. Thank you. That's good. And just to confirm, uh, Mr. Goodman will be acting as Chief Justice? That's correct. That's right. Thank you, Chief Justice and the honorable members or justices of the court. My name is Hassoni Raymond and I, along with my co-counsel, Elizabeth Tuck, rise to represent the appellant, KJM. I will be addressing the first issue before the court related to whether the presumptive ceiling established by the Jordan framework apply to youth criminal justice proceedings, or in other words, whether a lower presumptive ceiling is necessary to secure the constitutional right to a speedy trial within the YCJA system. And my colleague will be addressing the second issue concerning the reasonableness of the delay in the case at bar. Now, your honors, this case is about securing and safeguarding the constitutionally mandated right to a speedy trial for society's most vulnerable citizens. You. Counselor, is that an absolute right? No, Your Honor, all rights, no right is absolute and does come with some limitations. However, there are no, uh, the Crown or the respondents have no justification uh, to limit this right in the case at bar. And Isn't I will. The um, resources of the court. I'm sorry, Mr. Register, could you stop time? Um, before Justice Martin's question, there seemed to be uh, some type of feedback. I don't know. If everybody can make sure they're on mute. Um, okay. All right. Justice Martin, I didn't hear the question. If you wouldn't mind reading sure. it. Um, well, my question is, isn't the um, preserving and using of the court resources a justification that um, would be applicable in this situation? Respectfully, no, Your Honor, as implementing a lower constitutional standard specifically for youth would not require an extensive amount of court resources. However, we would also caution this court from ruling that exhaustion of resources is a justification to violate human rights and constitutionally recognized rights, as that would open the floodgates to uh, infringing on many other constitutionally guarded rights. And if we were counsel, if we were to rule in your favor, isn't the concern then that we would have a whole slew of KGM motions? We would effectively be having more motions on the basis of this decision saying that a stay should be granted because there are young offenders being affected. Yes, Your Honor. However, it would just shift the burden. For instance, if the burden, it would shift the burden from the youth to prove that exceptional circumstances made it their case markedly okay. longer. Than so, counsel, if you're agreeing that we're going to have more motions, then doesn't that uh, put the justice system under greater strain and actually move us away from what we're trying to deal with here in Jordan, which is to streamline our proceedings? Respectfully, no, Your Honor. We would submit that the same amount of claims for a stay would happen if the ceiling, if youth have the same ceiling or have a lower ceiling. However, what so you're we, saying what, that just your, your your submission really is the fact that if we create a separate test and another threshold, we're not going to create more challenges. That's really what your submission is. Yes, Your Honor. It would not result in an increase in challenges. However, it would result in greater protections for youth because now the burden. Not be on and, and you're making that submission, even though the fact that it is that Jordan 
arguably took the approach that it did to move away from the Morin approach, which was multifactorial and included prejudice, and wanted to have one threshold. You're saying that it still would not create more proceedings. Yes, Your Honor, and we would submit that this would actually help to ensure that youth or most vulnerable citizens are protected. And we're not, we're, we do not submit today that for each individual marginalized group, there should be a separate ceiling. Rather, okay, right that's on. fine, counsel. I think you've answered my questions. You can move on or answer my, uh, my learned uh, friend's questions instead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Omar. As I, I'm unsure if I heard another question from the bench, so I'll pause to hear the concern. So my, my, my question is, do, do you think there should be other ceilings for other marginalized groups, or should there only be the ceiling for youth? Yes, Your Honor, our submission today is that there should only be a ceiling for youth. And for the following two reasons, we ask this court to reverse the ruling of the court below. First, young offenders face increased prejudice, which requires that criminal proceedings against them be resolved more quickly to secure their constitutional right under Section 11B of the Charter. And second, the below- Counselor, I've got a question. Why, why do we need to impose a new constitutional speed limit? as it were in these cases. Don't the YCJA provisions create the procedural safeguards uh, and the framework in which these uh, proceedings exist? Are those not sufficient to defend the constitutional interests of you? Respectfully, no, Justice Phillips. We, we urge this court to implement a lower constitutional standard specifically for youth because it places the below the ceiling test in Jordan places this disproportionately high burden upon them. And this is why a lower constitutional standard is necessary to ensure that the, the well-recognized right that youth should be tried expediously is not just a hollow promise as the court in Jordan articulated it. And this court has long recognized the increased need to expedite youth proceedings due to the enhanced prejudice. So, uh, just I'm going to pause you there because you said well-recognized right. I know of only one charter right. Are you talking about separate charter rights for separate people? And and if you are, what are they and how do we come up with an 11B part two, if that's what you're suggesting? No, I'd just like to know what right no, uh, Justice Barkley, we do not submit that there should be separate rights. However, in order to recognize the same right to a speedy trial that both adults and youth enjoy or are entitled to, we submit that a lower constitutional standard is necessary to ensure that both adults and youth receive that same constitutional guarantee of a speedy trial. Now, as the majority and dissenting justices note, Delays have a greater psychological impact on young people because of the increased rapidity in which a young person's memory fades. It makes it difficult for them to recall past events, which impairs their ability to make a full answer in defense, which is a right protected under Section 7. Okay, right. tell her, I, oh, sorry, sorry, Justice Goodman, please go ahead. Sorry, um, counsel, you can assume we all agree with that. I don't think there's anybody on this panel that disagrees that it's ideal to move things along quicker for youth because of the reasons why you mentioned. Why can't be, that be done under the 18 month, month threshold and just consider youth on a more personalized individual basis as they come before a trial judge who's in the best position to analyze those factors? Yes, Your Honor, because the below the ceiling test is ill-equipped to address this enhanced need for timeliness because A, it puts a disproportionately high burden on youth to justify that their delays were unreasonable and okay but i'm sorry I, I got a question why is it disproportionate it seems to me that if someone is making a claim that their rights have been violated the burden rightfully falls on their shoulders to justify uh the claim for their breach respectfully we would disagree justice phillips as the same rationale in jordan often establishing a ceiling is to move the, is to promote the allocation of resources and actually shift the burden from the defense and onto the crown to prove that the delay uh, was reasonable. So that's the main that's important main contention here is that if we submit and if we agree that youth face this heightened prejudice and are among the most vulnerable in our society, as noted on paragraph 55 of the record and established in the Queen and Alejandro, as demonstrated on paragraph 55 as well, we submit. Council. Council. 
Was there any consideration pre-Jordan for attributing delays to the defense? Your Honor, this was uh, considered in a contextual approach as more, the Morin framework did not prescribe specific- So you'll agree with me that what the Jordan approach did here was really solidify the fact that there is defense accountability. Is that correct? Your Honor, to some extent, but our characterization of that would be Jordan actually shift the burden to the Crown and promoted that resources be allocated as to not encourage the culture of complicity that absent ceiling under more. But Jordan also said that it's about all the participants in the justice system. And that statement can only be interpreted as including explicitly the defense bar, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And so so then one reading of Jordan is exactly the opposite of the submission that you're making here, which is that the Jordan framework really also said that it's also defense's role to play a uh, part here in ensuring that matters proceed expeditiously. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And we would agree that the defense does have an interest and a burden and a role to play in ensuring speedy trials. However, if this court has consistently recognized that youth need ex- more speedy trials than compared to adults, then it would follow that a lower presumptive ceilings for youth would be established to secu- ensure that they have the same constitutional guarantee as but adults. Counsel, it would, it would be it would, impl- sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to build uh, on that previous question. Isn't one of the goals of the Youth Criminal Justice Act accountability? And doesn't this this requirement that a, a defendant, an accused, um, uh, participate in in the justice system in this way, uh, promote accountability? Isn't this something that, that uh, is exactly in keeping with the principles of the YCGA? Respectfully, no, Justice Martin. We would submit that prolonged delays for youth, which are and which require expedited trials, does not promote accountability. What would promote accountability is speedy trials, so youth are able to appreciate the connection between the crime and their actions, and then participate in some rehabilitation methods. And now I agree. And, and, so, sir, I'd be I'd be inclined to to go along with your line of reasoning if we were approaching this case with let's say clean hands from the defense perspective. The fact is there were defense delays in this case and it is on the basis of those delays that we are uh, we were moved below the presumptive ceiling created in the Jordan framework. You're merely proposing we create a new ceiling because the existing ceiling wasn't adequate to accommodate your client. Respect, Your Honor, while it is in the case at bar, however, there are other cases in which a youth case might not take the full 18 months, but for instance, in 15 months, and the burden would still be on them to prove yeah. that that's We're talking about this case, right? And this is 28 yeah. days. Let's be very clear here. This is 28 days past the 18 month threshold. We're not talking about those other cases. Yeah, Certainly and, and are, further, and- if, I, if, I were to, if I were to buy that argument, then what we would happen is we could very well make a ruling to move the presumptive ceiling to 17 months. Your client would still not get the stay that you're asking for. So again, I ask, what is the basis? What is the legal basis that we should enter a stay in this case? Your Honor, while my co-counsel will specifically address the reasonableness of the delay in the case at bar, or submission is that the basis of a stay is the uh, is the fact that youth face this enhanced prejudice, and that we are asking this court to ensure that the burden does not fall on youth in this case or future cases to prove why the stay is markedly longer or the case, the trial is markedly longer than it reasonably should be. And now I'd briefly like to touch on my second point, which is that the below the ceiling test is ill-equipped to address this enhanced need for timeliness within the youth justice context. Thus, a separate presumptive ceiling is necessary for two reasons. A, the below the ceiling test puts a heavy burden on youth or society's most vulnerable to demonstrate that their delay was unreasonable, thus removing the presumption. And B, but Councilor, it doesn't put the burden like directly on youth. Like, yes, they, they are in the essence that they are the accused. But if they have competent counsel, if they uh, are, you know, able to make full answer in defense, as as they have the right to do, uh, is that is that burden not appropriately placed? You have a minute and ten seconds, counsel. Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. You have a so, minute left. Oh, yeah, one minute. 
I see my time then is about to expire. May I answer your question, uh, Justice Phillips, and then briefly conclude? Please yeah, answer Justice Phillips's question. I, I then have a question, and then I'll give you a moment to conclude. Certainly, and to address your question, Justice Phillips, we would submit that a ceiling is still necessary for youth. While it's not necessarily the youth that would represent them in court, we see often in the criminal justice system where a lot of disadvantaged youth actually use free legal services, which might not be able to adequately represent them. And that is why a lower presumptive ceiling would, not, would ensure that the right to a speedy trial in the youth context is not just a hollow promise because ceilings encourage conduct and the allocation of resources that, that promote timely trials and provide a degree of certainty as they allow participants in the criminal justice system to know in advance the bounds of reasonableness so proactive measures can be taken to remedy any potential delay. Council, the majority, majority below mentioned the concern that we could have 20 different ceilings. A 12-year-old is different than a 15-year-old, is different than a 17-year-old. How do we make a 15-month ceiling for all youth while still factoring in this need that certain youth are, should, should get less time? 40 seconds. Certainly, Your Honor, because below the ceiling, youth, the contextual approach would still be applicable. However, above the ceiling, it would just ensure that the Crown is the one bearing the burden of proving that the delay is reasonable. So the delay or the burden would not be on youth. And we would caution against adopting the respondent's argument that this would create a multiplicity of ceilings that would muddy the waters as we would submit that one blanket ceiling for all youth would be would be sufficient to safeguard their rights just as okay. one. I, I, have, I have your point, counsel. Just quickly conclude. Mr. Register, you don't need to interrupt him at time. Certainly, Justice Goodman, and uh, for these reasons, we ask this court to rule in favor of the appellant. Barring no further question from the bench, I'll now yield the podium to my co-counsel to continue arguments on behalf of the appellant. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Uh, Ms. Tuck? Uh, I'd just like to confirm that this camera positioning is all right for the justices. It's good for me. Everybody else seems to be nodding. Great, thank you. May I proceed? Yes, thank you, Ms. Tuck. Go ahead. Good morning, or good afternoon, rather, Justices of the Court. My name is Elizabeth Tuck, and I rise to continue argumentation on behalf of the appellant, KJM, in the case at bar. We are asking this court to reverse the holding of the lower court and find that not only should there be a lower presumptive ceiling for accused youth persons, but also that the Jordan principles were incorrectly applied by the lower courts, subjecting KJM to an 11B violation. Now this will be demonstrated through three submissions. First, the lower court erred in their calculation of delay. Second, because of this miscalculation, a stay below the 18 month Jordan ceiling is warranted. And third, this case cannot be justified under a transitional exception. Counsel, just so I can put my notes in big numbers, can you tell me, just give me a number, what your Jordan delay is and what your Morin delay is? Yes, Your Honor. In this case, we posit that the delay under Jordan is roughly six months, and under the Morin framework, it is roughly 13 months. I think you mixed up the two, but that's fine. Oh, pardon me. That's okay. Um, your Honors, to address what my friends will claim as the largest source now of defense delay in this case, which is when the voir dire had to be continued for March 2nd, 2016. Counsel, uh, we're pretty familiar with the facts. I think we, if we have time, we can maybe come back to these submissions. What I'm very interested in is transitional cases and how we should treat transitional cases because there has been quite a bit of controversy around those in the past. So is this a transitional case? If so, how should we treat it and why? Yes, Your Honor. So we acknowledge that this is a transitional case, meaning, of course, that it was being decided or that the, the controlling precedent changed while this case was being decided. But we recognize that in this case, the transitional exception should not be applied. And Your Honors, this follows for two primary submissions. The first, Your Honors, is that the previous jurisprudence of the Queen and Morin framework articulates as per the record that 
eight to 10 months of institutional and crown delay was reasonable for adults, let alone for youth persons who require these stricter timelines. However, in this case, we see almost 13 months of institutional delay. But further, Your Honors, into the right, second council, council, you told me a minute ago that the Morin delay is six months. Did, uh, I, Your Honor, did I mishear you? Pardon me, Your Honor. Uh, yes, the, the six, well, as per the lower uh, court decision, Your Honor, uh, as the justices have alluded, it was almost 13 months of institutional and crown delay that okay, we see. So your Morin delay is 13 months. What's your Jordan delay? Your Honors, under the Jordan framework, we suggest that six or seven months is subtracted, or, or rather is looked at as crown or institutional delay. And Your Honors, Further to address the wait, 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 Sorry, I think what the justice is asking is for your total Jordan delay, so your, your Jordan number, if you will. So mm -hmm. just so I just to clarify, Justice Goodman, are you asking for the total trial time subtracting the uh, the appropriate delays? That would be your Jordan delay, and your Morin delay is subtracting things like intake period and uh, yes. defense, the defense delay. So I just, I just want your raw numbers. And, I, and I'm sorry if I confused you earlier, but I, I just want your raw numbers. I want to know what we're working with. Certainly, Your Honor. I apologize for, for my misunderstanding. Under Jordan, the full trial delay that we are proposing in this case is 16 months uh, and roughly 28 days. And the Morin delay, when subtracting the total delay under the Morin framework, we acknowledge that this case would be around uh, 11 months or so. Uh, but, Your Honors, to address further the transitional exception, or the fact that no transitional exception should apply in this case, we posit that the respondents have not provided any demonstration on the facts that this timeline would be reasonable underneath the Morin framework. So, Your Honors, we cannot simply accept a blanket statement that because the Morin framework was more onerous or because it took longer, that that inherently means that the timeline was reasonable. This requires well, that isn't it sufficient for us though, factors that it, sorry sorry go ahead uh, justice howard i i was going to say isn't it sufficient for us just to say that 80 percent of this matter was uh conducted with the assumption that the Morin framework was the appropriate framework isn't that the more reasonable assumption for this bench to make no your honor as although we do acknowledge that roughly 80 percent of this case did occur under the Morin framework that does not inherently mean that this timeline would have been reasonable underneath that framework. And absent this demonstration by the respondents, it would be misplaced, Your Honors, to grant uh, a transitional exception to this case. Well, we could still give you your stay under trans under, under transitional exception, right? 80% more in 11 months, that's well above the guidelines. I mean, I'm sure you'll, you'll address that because this is a serious violent matter that, that, was, that was important in Morin, but I mean, we could still give you your stay. Right. Uh, certainly, Your Honor, we uh, would absolutely be in favor of a stay below the Jordan ceiling being the outcome that this court proposes. However, it is still important to note that the respondents have not demonstrated that this timeline would have been reasonable under the Marin framework. So we uh, caution this court again against accepting a transitional exception in this case. But your honors, to address more closely now, I, I think what I, the question that I'm hearing is: if we make the assumption that this is a transitionary case, why is it not reasonable? Why should we be granting a stay? Yes, your honor, and this brings me to address fully my second submission: that a stay below the 18 months Jordan ceiling is a warranted in this case. And now the stay or the test for stay below the ceiling is two pronged, and I will address each of these prongs in turn. To address the specifics of the first prong, or if the defense took reasonable steps to expedite the proceedings, an analysis is required to evaluate the actions the defense took. So we're very familiar with the test. I think what, what we're going to have questions about, if I can jump right to the chase, is why we shouldn't be penalizing your client for his lack of apparent responsibility, showing up to court two and a half hours late. Two and a half hours, that's not an insignificant amount of time. Certainly, Your Honor, we recognize that there may be an element of defense delay in that case. However, we caution this court against accepting the two to three month limit as the lower court has articulated. 
And your honors, first, we will but need counsel. To I mean, this is that's a discount. It really took five months to hear the matter appropriately. The lower court already evaluated these criteria and said it is much more reasonable to deem it at, let's say, two to three months. And if we take the two months, we're still below the Jordan ceiling. That's the problem I'm having with your line of reasoning. Your Honor, we certainly acknowledge that there is an element of defense delay in terms of KJM arriving late to trial. And we posit that the two months or the lower end of the spectrum is appropriate as he is a youth person. But Your Honor's- But he's not a like youth person with clean hands. These are the questions that we heard earlier today is that maybe in a different case where an accused wasn't responsible in such a significant way for the delay, we might be looking at an exceptional case, but not in this case, right? I mean, this is an accused who actually helped create some of the delay in a very significant manner. And the other reality is, counsel, we don't know what the youth showing up late actually did. Nobody checked. Nobody, we don't have a record before us that suggests how quickly we could have got a two and a half hour matter or how quickly we got a five and five hour matter. So what is this court supposed to do with that lack of a record? I mean, I blame both parties for that and I blame both trial counsel, not, not appellate counsel, but fact of the matter is we don't have that record. So what are we supposed to do about that? Yes, Justice Goodman. And this is precisely why we caution this court against accepting an unspecified amount of time as delay when these calculations have not been taken. And we posit while there may, this may have been an oversight, that it should not weigh poorly in the defense's favor in that case. So your honors, we also recognize that subtracting the two months or the lower end of the spectrum does still place the trial timeline below the Jordan ceiling. Uh, but even with this trial timeline below the 18 months, a stay below the ceiling is still warranted. And your honors, this is demonstrated, of course, through the two prongs of the test. And to address my first prong, or that again, the defense took reasonable steps to expedite the proceedings, we see that this was demonstrated as the defense moved to have the earliest possible hearing date of June 29, 2018. It just so happened that this was not a sitting day. Okay. I, we, again, we, we, do, we do get the facts, but I, I maybe want to come to the, the second prong. Let's talk about what markedly longer means. Because I don't really see anywhere in the record that this did take markedly longer. I mean, yes, you know, if we, you know, just lay it out abstractly, you know, 18 months seems like a long period of time. But, you know, in the life cycle of the court, this isn't so far outside the possible range that we would call it markedly longer. Especially in the pre-Jordan framework. Especially pre-Jordan, exactly. So what, 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 what's your authority for saying this is markedly longer? Yes, Your Honor. So we posit that the time or the delay, the total trial delay in this case, was markedly longer as, uh, Your Honors, uh, pardon me, the delay in this case was markedly longer because as found in paragraph 92 of the record, your honors. All right, sorry, uh, sorry, counselor. Just let me come and find it. Okay. Paragraph 92. Yes, your honor. And this okay. is where it's cited that it was, yes, 18 months and 28 days of the total delay. However, your honors, this trial, or in this case, the crown is responsible for at least six months of delay. And your honors, this occurs first and foremost. Uh, the when the voir dire had to be held March second, right? Okay, again, but we're coming back to the facts. But but markedly longer it has a a connotation. Yes, so yes. What, why? And, so what? What should? How long should this have taken? Why don't we start there? And Castle, if I can just uh, jump on that question, what is the legal definition of markedly longer? What is there a test that this court should be applying? Can you point us? to some jurisprudence for some guidance on what is meant by this term markedly longer. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, markedly longer, or the way that we evaluate that, is looked at through a bird's eye view. And Your Honors, that can be found in paragraph 182 of the record. And so what this means, Your Honor, is that we are not analyzing with mathematical precision every instance or every day, every hour where delay may have occurred, but rather looking at the overarching timeline of the case if it were to take markedly longer. And we propose that it did indeed take markedly longer as the crown or institutional delay was almost uh, six months in this case, meaning that if more proactive steps had been taken, your honors, 
this timeline could have been shortened but, by but counsel uh, like it doesn't okay like but what you're asking is for the prosecution and for the courts to have acted perfectly in all these cases yes you're right maybe it could have been cut down you know a little bit but we don't practice law in a perfect world so like is that what you're asking for seems unrealistic uh well your honor or justice phillips we certainly agree that the standard here is not perfection for any of the actors involved, but rather the standard is reasonableness. But we propose that when the court moved so late for a voir dire with no notice, that this was not reasonable, and therefore this can be attributed as an exceptional event. And further, your honors, the issues with the, the transcript. But, but, sorry, I got, I got to quibble with you, counselor, because an exceptional event would actually be deducted from the delay in the Jordan framework if it was a discrete exceptional circumstance. So if you're telling me that this is a discrete exceptional circumstance, you're right. You know, maybe you're right, and we should not grant a stay in this case. I don't I think that, I think counsel just used that term for something to blame the crown for. Fair enough. I'll withdraw the point. Uh, pardon me if I misspoke, Your Honors. But yes, in this case, it would be crown or institutional delay. And so when looking at the overarching timeline, we see that this trial could have been wrapped up in almost 13 months instead of almost 19 that it took. And that is what we see remarkably longer in this case. So Your Honors, the lower court did miscalculate the delay in this case. We see also, Your Honors, that the to both prongs have been demonstrated for a stay below the ceiling and it is for these reasons that we are asking this court to reverse the holding now barring any further questions from the bench i will yield my time to my friends thank, thank you, you. Uh, all right so the respondents are her majesty who who will be going first that will be me chief justice goodman alexandra robbins okay thank you go ahead Ms. robbins Thank you. Good afternoon, honorable justices of the court. My name is Robin's initial A and my co-counsel is Rabar initial D. We are here on behalf of the respondent, Her Majesty the Queen in the matter before you. We're humbly asking that you uphold the lower court decision made at the Supreme Court level, ruling that the presumptive ceilings as set out in Jordan are not a violation of Section 11B rights, specifically of youth offenders. We have two brief submissions for you today. Firstly, I will submit that the presumptive ceilings for what constitutes unreasonable trial delays in the Jordan framework do and should apply in youth proceedings, given that they do not violate Section 11B charter rights of youth offenders. The primary issue in this case, um, as, as directed by the appellant, is whether or not the below ceiling test is sufficient in accommodating the rights or whether or not a new ceiling should be lowered. We concede that the need for timeliness is heightened in youth cases, of course. However, that being said, we submit that it is important to clarify that we are not to determine the most optimal approach to timeliness or whether or not the current framework- Counsel, uh, is that not exactly the job of this court to determine the most optimal path? We're trying to weigh the constitutional rights of youth. We're very vulnerable people. With respect, Your Honor, we disagree. We are not attempting to- Sorry, you, you disagree that youth are particularly vulnerable people? Or that the court's job is to optimize the law? <laughs> no, Your Honors, my apologies. To the answer to the first question would be, we do agree that youths are more vulnerable. The answer to the second question would be, we're simply looking to determine whether or not the current framework is constitutional, if it is sufficient to accommodate youths' rights. It is our position that we will be engaging essentially in a form of judicial activism if we go beyond that which is necessary to achieve those rights. But are we really engaging in judicial activism when the charter itself doesn't specify what unreasonable is? That, that to me, says that the drafters of the charter intended the courts to read into it. And, and so if the courts are it by looking at other statutes, in particular, we have a statute that focuses on young offenders. In fact, that's the opposite of judicial activism. That is the judiciary responding to the very clear signals that the legislature has provided us as to what the important considerations are in terms of 11B rights. Certainly. Again, Your Honors, I'm going to break that down into two responses. The first one being that 
the separation of the two justice systems does not necessitate the separation of constitutional frameworks. We concede that the, the youth justice system that Parliament has created will certainly inform the way that we interpret Section 11B rights. But just so then it's not judicial activism for us to use those statutes. It is, Your Honor, in this particular case with what the appellant is recommending, because the current framework is accommodating youth right, youth's rights. Through so was it judicial activism for the Supreme Court of Canada to create a new threshold in Jordan to move away from the Morin framework? Was that judicial activism as well? It's an excellent question, Your Honor. We submit that it wasn't, given that at that time there was a, a lack of clarity and they were seeking to establish... A and are you suggesting that there's clarity as it relates to young offenders post-Jordan? Well, we would say that the amount of clarity that has been achieved is essentially the best we can get. And I'd like to point to the appellant's remedy to substantiate that, if I can just conclude. Um, with the appellant's suggested remedy of a lowered ceiling, this would essentially lead to even more of a lack of clarity than the current system in which we use a contextual approach underneath the ceiling. How what, would that be less clear if we just had another presumption? We had another th uh, threshold. We had another uh, number, if you want, a strict number that could be used for young offenders. Doesn't that give us more certainty? We respectfully disagree, Your Honor, for two reasons. Firstly, it could lead to a precedent which could lead to a multiplicity of ceilings. The appellant... Yeah, so why is that a bad thing? Well, I mean, don't we want to protect vulnerable groups in our society? Certainly, Your Honor. We're not suggesting that that is a bad thing, but we're certainly suggesting that it leads to a lack of clarity. So if clarity is at issue here, the fact of the matter is that the appellants sought the appellant's sought remedy does lead to a lack of clarity as well and this is not well counsel I, I finish your please, please finish your point Thank when you're you. done, um can you tell me i mean we're using these terms remedies we all agree that youth are vulnerable they need to be treated differently when it comes to time to trial so if you don't agree on the ceiling tell me what's your remedy certainly your honors the current framework as it stands accommodates youths in the below ceiling test as set out in Jordan, in the second prong of the test, youth's youthfulness can be taken into account. And I would like to directly address the appellant's issue with this. They suggest that because youths have to apply for this stay, that it doesn't accommodate their rights or it constitutes some sort of undue burden. There, with respect, there has been no evidence put out to suggest that the burden is undue. The youth has to apply, but they're applying within a framework, within a test, which the Supreme Court has already laid out as pre preferential to them and that will accommodate them. So given that this Do is not- Do you have any evidence that the court in Jordan had young offenders in mind? Can you point us to anywhere in there where they had that in consideration? Um, my apologies, Your Honor. To clarify, are you referring to Jordan or- the current case. I, I think this is what you're talking Jordan. about, the Jordan framework. So where in Jordan My do they consider young offenders anywhere? Certainly. Um, well, they didn't con consider young offenders at all. And that's, I would argue, the, the main issue in this case and why um, we are all we are all here today. They did not consider... No, I guess building on that point, Justice Abella was in the majority in Jordan. She's in the dissent in this case. Is that not significant that we have a judge involved in both of these decisions who clearly uh, finds that there should be a lower ceiling for youth who was involved with that Jordan decision? So should we not give deference to that fact? With respect, Your Honor, we do see your position. However, on the other hand, in Jordan, youths were not at issue. The issue was not brought forward. Perhaps it would have been beneficial for the court to address the issue at the time. We wouldn't have to have these proceedings now. But that being said, in this case at the Supreme Court level, the court did deal with that issue and they reinterpreted Jordan in light of youths and they found that the current framework does not need to be modified. What we're concerned with is modifying something that does not need to be. As it why, Tell me why not? Because, Your Honor, the below ceiling test accommodates youths, regardless of the fact that they have to apply. It accommodates them. We, we, we agree that youth should be treated differently. How does leaving an 18-month ceiling account for a youth that should get a stay at 15 months? How does the 18-month ceiling accommodate that? 
Because, Your Honor, if there is a youth at 15 months who has experienced an unreasonable delay, they can request a stay of proceedings and the below ceiling test will accommodate them. Okay. Well, you have no guarantee of that, right? You have absolutely no guarantee. And in fact, this is the concern here post Jordan is that for young offenders, they used to have a, a lower th ceiling, let's say 12 months or 15 months. And post Jordan, it's now going to be 18 months. So it's going to make the protections in our justice system for young offenders worse than it was before. Isn't that correct? With respect to your honors, we would not say that the protections are worse than before. Um, essentially, we would say that we are balancing these interests. So with the below- But in that balancing, young offenders lose some of the protections they had pre-Jordan. Isn't that correct? We, we do not agree, your honor. Given that young offenders, if they experience an unreasonable delay below the ceiling, the trial judge in that case is to apply as per the well, law. That still shifts the onus to them because it, it, it's a matter of shifting the presumptions, right? So it's going to be under the 18 months. It creates an additional burden for young offenders who are one of the most vulnerable members of our justice system. And after you answer Justice Herede's question, I want to hear what you were going to say about the, about the, the role of the trial judge, okay? I, I believe I will answer that in this question. Actually, my my, my uh, apologies, Your Honors. Could you repeat your question? Was that toward Reda? Justice Ha Rede, could you repeat your question for me, please? Why, why don't I try to combine the questions here? How does Absolutely. the role of the trial judge adequately address the fact that the threshold ceiling we have now is essentially higher than what was in place prior to Jordan? Certainly, Your Honors. So to begin, if a youth experiences any delay over 18 months, that will immediately be unreasonable. So those youths will be automatically dealt with. For the youths that experience a delay under the 18 months, they will be able to use that test. And the trial judge will have that precedent as set by, by the lower court in this case, the instruction and the guidance that they are to refer to the youthfulness in that. Right, but but counselor, I, I think what, what my fellow justices are concerned about is that the Crown's trying to have it both ways here. They're trying to say, yes, Jordan safeguards the concerns of all youth, but then are in fact uh, putting out um, putting out a, a standard that is detrimental to their overall interest compared to what there was prior to Jordan. So we're, we're concerned really that the Crown's trying to have its cake and eat it too. Uh, we, would, we would disagree with that, Your Honor. The test as set out will accommodate those youths. And I'd, I'd like to point to the policy considerations I was going to address because it's extremely crucial to address the appellant's alternative to this, which is detrimental. If we are to lower the ceiling to 15 months, we essentially automatically deem unreasonable and have a stay of proceedings, which equates to not trying a case, not having a potential offender go punished. All of those- okay, well, what, I'm sorry, what, what would be wrong with that? I mean, that's the purpose of having these timelines is to make sure that justice is proceeding apace. And, 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 and Jordan yeah. says we shouldn't deal with that. I mean, we used to deal with that under Moore. Certainly. Three minutes. Thank you. Certainly, Your Honors. Well, with the appellant's own submissions, they did concede that sometimes under 18 months will be unreasonable for a youth. So it is not in every case. So the issue we take with it is that if you impose a 15 month ceiling, there is a potential between that 15 and 18 month bracket that there are delays, delays that are reasonable, but they will simply lead to a stay regardless. But but then, but but that's not so because under the Jordan framework, it is also open to the Crown to make submissions on why the delay is, or sorry, why the delay is not unreasonable in that particular case. If the Crown had its act together in all those cases, we wouldn't have this problem. Certainly, Your Honors. My apologies. Could you could you rephrase that question? What what I mean to say is. All that would do is when it's above the ceiling, it just places the burden on the crown, the, the party who is responsible for dragging this forward. So it doesn't, I don't really buy your argument on that subject. Okay, your honors. Um, Counselor, you're short on time. I have one, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna piggyback on, on the question of Justice Phillips. Surely isn't that a, a much more fair way to deal with the issue of delay to place the onus on the crown rather than on a child? With respect, Your Honor, my, my apologies to go back to the point I keep reiterating, but the issue here is whether or not the current framework is accommodating the rights. 
Whether or not the other framework would be better is, is not within the purview of this court to decide. We are cert simply to decide whether or not the current framework is- well, Council, I have a different question that isn't the question that you seem to be answering, and it's very short questions. So just yes or no, short on time. Would you agree Certainly. with me that having a 15 month ceiling will force the courts to deal with youth justice matters in a more expeditious manner? One minute. We would not agree. I, I, I'm very interested in that point, so it doesn't have to be a yes or no from my end. Thank you. Um, we would not agree with that. We would agree, certainly, it would place more pressure, but given the practical realities, um, certainly it won't occur in all scenarios. The court may try, but given limited resources, it will not necessarily lead to a, uh, a speedier trial in all scenarios. Was there another question from the bench that I missed? I, I just wanted to, um, I, I wonder where in the charter that the uh, the government gets away with having limited resources. Is is the point not to not to ensure that a, accused rights are protected? I think that should be a greater concern than, uh, you know, court resources from our perspective. Certainly, Your Honors, and we completely agree with you. We are not suggesting that court resources supersede constitutional rights. For example, thank you, had there been a uh, no below ceiling test in that That's case. Time counsel. May I just complete my sentence? Yes. yes, please. Thank you. In that case, if there were no below ceiling test, certainly the court resources would not supersede. But given that the rights are being accommodated in the test, the court resources are simply being brought forth as an extra detrimental policy implication. Barring any further questions, Your Honors, that con concludes my submissions. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Robbins. Uh, Thank you, Ms. Robbins. Ms. Rabar, please. Good afternoon, honorable judges of this court. My name is Rabar Initial D and I will be concluding our submissions for you today. As discussed by my co-counsel, the existing framework does provide protection and thus applies to youth proceedings. However, the question of whether or not the delay in this case was reasonable remains. We submit that the delay was in fact reasonable. It is my understanding that this bench would really like to address the idea of Morin versus M versus Jordan. So I'm going to do the same thing I did to um, the appellants. Tell me what your Jordan time is. Tell me what your Morin time is. Just give me yes. a number. Yes, for sure, Your Honor. Here, I would like to point out a mistake my friends have made in law. In paragraph 182, first they mentioned- just, 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 That's fine, but just answer my question. What's your yes, Jordan with the numbers? What's uh, your Jordan delay? What's your Morin delay? Yes, Your Honor. After the first- Delay the, delay, the first delay is deducted, it is 16 and a half months. And after the second delay is deducted, it is 15 and a half months under Jordan. And okay. as per your point for Morin, this is where the issue in law comes in. As set out in this case and in Morin, the guidelines are not meant to be limitation periods. I, or well, okay, counsel, I know that, I know that, I, but I'm, I'm asking, I'm not asking you for the guideline. I'm asking you in this case, what's your Morin delay? We believe that it is not necessary in this case to address the Morin delay at a specific period, we would put it around 12 to 15 months. We don't have oh, a 15 months Morin delay. Did you, did you not subtract institute? Did you not subtract intake period institutional? And, yes, and, 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 and this is, this is where the mistaken law comes in your honor. More like, I get it, I, within your submissions, I'd like you to explain to me where you get 12 to 15 months. Cause that's certainly not what justice Moldaver found. Yes, for sure. Your honor. If I could direct the court's attention to paragraph 173 of the dissenting decision, I could wait. Will you? Yeah, just a moment. I just want to find it. For sure. Uh, I, I'm at 173. Uh, yep, I'm there. If it helps, it's on page 92, on the bottom of page 92. Yep, I'm there. Thank you. Okay, walk us through it. Yes. As it's stated here, there are two guidelines. RVM in 2017 and RV Morin. This judge in particular, RVM sets it out 12 to 15. It is, I believe, Justice. I could sure. Yes, yes. And um, in Morin, it is eight to 10 months. We take the position of 12 to 15 months, just as a well, condition to Cal 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 Firstly, Justice Pachoco is not binding on this court, but Justice Pachoco is speaking about a Jordan ceiling for youth. He's not speaking about um, Morin, Morin delay. Yes, Your Honor, there's two cases that set out these guidelines. If it's if you could direct your attention to the second sentence, it says an RVM. So there's mm -hmm. two sets of guidelines that our friends were conflating. We are taking the higher ceiling, 
thus giving them more breathing room. Okay, all right, proceed, Council. Yes. Okay. Um, furthermore, our friends make a mistake in law when they say that in paragraph 182, the dissent argues about markedly longer being a bird's eye view test. If you just continue a few sentences into that paragraph, they, they, they stress how this is about the clear cases test. In this case, the clear cases test is taken contextually because it is a transitional case. This contextual evidence is based on two factors. First, seriousness of the offense, which is, it is our position was high given the young victim scarring. If we're concerned about youth, we should be concerned about youth across all dimensions. Nobody and, is disputing this is a serious case. Yes, let's move on. And second, that prejudice experienced by the accused was low, given the fact that he was kept in pretrial detention for only nine days before- We being agree, we, 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 we agree low, that there's low prejudice based on how long he was in detention, certainly not, I would think, on how long this took and some of the inherent issues that we've been litigating. Yes, sorry, Justice Goodman, could I get clarification on, is there a question or is there? No, I, there wasn't a question, I'm just saying. We're saying please like, move you, on. We agree. Yeah, we agree. Yes, okay, thank you. I'm not, I'm not that good at saying, I, I spend more time saying please, please move on than I need to. My apologies, <laughs> Justice, I will definitely. Um, Yes, as it is my position, prejudice does not outweigh the seriousness of the crime. This is the test that Justice Brown asked when it came to markedly. While markedly doesn't have a set out test, it is just meant as excessive in this case. It is. It does tie into the idea of contextual factors. Would you and agree though that right. so, uh, crime is interpreted and understood a little bit differently by young offenders? Excuse me, your honors? Would you agree that time is interpreted and experienced differently by young offenders? Certainly, certainly we concede that point, Your Honor. That is why, so, yes. If we're looking at prejudice in the case of a young offender, it needs to be understood contextually. Yes, of course, Your Honors. It Again, this ties into the markedly longer question. Of course, the case could have taken less time, and this is where the questions of delays come in, which is another sub-submission of mine. Um, under the defense delay, the outcome is that we have five months of delay. No matter how you phrase it, there are two necessary occurrences that attributed to this outcome. If you remove either of them. Let's, counsel, let's talk about the first occurrence, which is, occurrence, which yes. is client, client being late for court. Yes. We're, we're assuming that the, the date, that the first date offered, which was July the, uh, uh, I think I've learned July the 28th. Thank you, counsel. We're assuming that that's not the first date available at all. So let's let's assume two and a, we couldn't even find two and a half hours before July twenty eighth. If that were the case, then this whole argument about this being defense delay wouldn't even be an issue. So uh, it, there's no evidence before this court. Nobody put on record what other dates were available. And while you're speaking at this date, I'm very I'm also very interested in in the transcript issue and how why we shouldn't be deferring to the trial judge who found that this was um, institutional delay. Of course, Your Honor. Um, unfortunately, in this case, the, the transcript from the Ladir did was incomplete. So there was no telling if July 28th was the most, the, the nearest date to set a set a five hour hearing. Exactly. Why, why are we holding that against the defense? First, we would like to say that this is a practical reality of our justice system. Sometimes transcripts are incomplete. Sometimes they go missing. The law is a human practice, and that should be kept in mind. Trial judges shouldn't be superheroes. Right, uh, but, but we're, we're not saying we're not saying there should be. Confused. Yeah, thank thank you, Justice Harreta. That's exactly what I was about to say. Yes, Your Honor. Section 11D protects grants constitution is a constitutional right that grants protection against unreasonable delays. It is our position that the delay caused by, even if we were to concede, the trial judge's vacation is not unreasonable. It is not unreasonable that trial judges take vacations. Uh, so counsel, I want to pull you, I want to actually pull you back to the defense delay component, yeah. right? Because my problem with it is, does this not place an unfair burden on a teenager? He was two hours late for one hearing among many over the course of 18 months. Shouldn't we take his youthfulness into account and cut him a break? Yes, Your Honor. It is our position that the, the five month delay caused by, semi caused by his tardiness, should be split in half between the two parties. However, even if you'd like to take a smaller. But why, but why, but why split it in half? Why not just say it was 30 days or 10 days? 
Of course, Your Honor, the first, the same section of the YCJA, section three, subsection one, subsection B, that grants young persons speedy trials also talks about promoting accountability. At the end of the day, two and a half hours is a very long time to be late to a hearing. Um, okay, but I'm not, gonna, I, I'm not gonna punish him if court wasn't available. If court, if the only first available court date was in July, I'm not holding it against this kid because he was two and a half hours late. I, I might hold it against him if there were the date next week for two and a half hours, but there's no evidence of that. I don't, what is the court, this court supposed to do with that? Trial counsel did not protect the record. Not appellate counsel, trial counsel. What does this court do with that? I'm sorry, Justice Goodman, I'm a bit confused. Are you saying he was two and a half hours late to his proceeding on March 2nd? Yes. Saying... So as a result of him being two and a half hours late, we needed to find a five hour hearing in the future as opposed to a two and a half hour hearing in the future. You're arguing we could have found that two and a half hours well before July 28th. How do we know that? Yes, this is, I was addressing this question before, my apologies. I got cut off and this okay. was question. Yeah, um, just get to it now. That in a perfect world, there would, of course, be the full transcript and we could refer is 28 days the nearest possible date to set for a five hour hearing. However, firstly, logic di dictates that two and a half hours are just more flexible and easier to fit on a docket because they are flexible. It, it wouldn't be unreasonable to defer to the majority decision and the majority and the sense discussion in majority paragraph one. Okay, I, 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 I take Counsel, I, I guess my concern with your argument is doesn't this just encourage um, the court to remain inefficient? If, if the court's always going to get the benefit, um, but not the youth, does how how do we how do we change the system if there's really no incentive for the court to change it? Absolutely, Justice Martin. It is not our position that the court is getting the benefit. We're splitting the difference in half. Even if we were to only attribute one month of the five to the defense, it would still fall below the ceiling, which me and which my me and my co-counsel, along with our friends, agree would grant a stay. So it's not as much providing a break for the young persons and or, sorry a break for the courts on on the debt to the detriment of the young persons more so that it is splitting the responsibility in half as they as both crown and defense took delay causing actions and routes three minutes counsel thank you isn't it also true though counsel what you're effectively doing here is saying that the accused was late for two and a half hours and the implications of that was that this proceeding was delayed extensively uh, yes, Justice. Okay, it, but the uh, reason why it was delayed extensively was because of inefficiencies in the system and the inability to have an earlier trial date. So going back to Justice Martin's question, shouldn't we be interpreting this in favor of the accused to send a message to the courts that they need to expedite matters, especially with yeah. youth proceedings? Especially because the YCJA and uh, the majority decision address the fact that youth are often not aware of the foreseeability of their of the foreseeable consequences of their actions. That's precisely why we have to put more procedural safeguards in place. Yes, Your Honor. Well, it, Your Honor's on the bench. Well, it is definitely important to address that now the the justice system could just say, oh, yeah, we don't have any dates available for you, so we're just going to push back your hearing. That is definitely a possibility, but this is, we would argue, that the majority and dissent recognize that we have to act on good faith to some extent the, the justice system doesn't want they have no interest in seeing young persons go untried for many many months there's the two the two prong test the first of which is that the defense has to establish they took they took um they took all actions to expedite trial and second that the case that not take markedly longer splits this responsibility between the defense and the crown it is on the crown to demonstrate that their actions didn't markedly expand the duration of trial so it is not in, it is not in good faith to assume that the justice system has no interest in saying in seeing youth proceedings quickly moreover we would like to argue that this test again makes both parties proactive and thus is a balancing of interests which is delicate and if we were to set a lower ceiling the courts which as shown by this delay are already overworked would have to work even harder and would be even more delays 
But counsel, it, that's not the accused's problem. And that's not the problem the Constitution is trying to get. So the court doesn't have constitutional rights. The accused does. So we, like the, the stales are, are weighted in their favor as they rightly should be. Yes, okay. One minute, counsel. One minute, thank you. Thank you. Um, of course, justices, however, we have to take into account certain practical realities that, again, trouble our systems. It is not on the accused, but it is also not on the justice system that there just isn't enough time on a docket for a five-hour continuation. It is irresponsible and irrational to account this to the justice system entirely and rid the defense of any delays just because their client was late because he's a teenager. Could I have a minute to conclude? Or? You still have time, counsel. Go ahead. Thank you. In conclusion, your honors, we maintain that the existing Jordan framework can and does address the need for prompt trials when it comes to youth matters. More specifically, in this case, the delay was reasonable given the subtraction of both defense delays and the discrete exceptional event. And even if these delays were not subtracted, the delays experienced in this case were reasonable given the transition from the Morin framework to Jordan. As such, we humbly ask you to uphold the decision made at the Supreme Court level. Barring any further questions, Your Honors, this concludes our submissions. Thank you, Counsel, for all of your submissions. As you can all see, I, I have a very active bench. Um, <laughs> they're, certainly, they're certainly very difficult to control, and there's only so much I can do. Um, this was a very different experience, and I think from some of your other rounds, and that's part of, part of the fun. Um, the other rounds probably got you to practice making the submissions and then um, we might change everything that you hear. So I don't think we're going to be able to make a decision today. So I think we're going to reserve judgment and uh, we will notify you when uh, this court is ready to release its decision. So Mr. Registrar, if you could inform council of the next steps, please. Uh, that's, um, okay, so everyone will just exit the room um, and uh, the judges will deliberate once uh, they're ready, we'll reconvene back in that massive virtual hall. Um, and just to announce who's moving on to the final round, uh, congratulations um, and we wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone.